Welcome to a new episode in the Multiverse video series. Today we're going to learn how to use OpenAI's GPT-2 text model in R. So to get started, let's take a look at what exactly GPT-2 is. Well, first of all, uh, you, you might have already been familiar with this particular press release from OpenAI. In uh, this particular press release, they describe like you know, like what were the implications of having better language models? And a lot of this post was related with, you know, like the implications of generating, for instance, fake news, which is what we have here. And, uh, you know, you might have seen this posted uh, earlier in the year. So basically the idea is that uh, you give a prompt to this particular model. Uh, so for instance, in this case, in a shocking finding, scientists discover a herd of unicorns living in a remote, previously unknown valley. And uh, the idea is that the model is able to generate uh, text out of this particular prompt. There's other variations of this, but uh, I think it's more interesting if we take a look at the particular papers. So the name of the paper that describes this model is a little bit uh, different. It's called uh, Language Models are unsupervised multitask learners and uh, one of the authors, Alec Radford. And uh, what, what you will see here is, I, I think there's two things that are interesting. Um, so the first one is that uh, somewhere in here, uh, basically we will, uh, well, they will make reference to the previous model, which, uh, so basically this paper is an improvement over another paper from uh, Radford. And um, it comes with a, a, a few differences that the previous um, model presented. But uh, one of the interesting differences, or at least one of the differences that I find interesting is that other projects have used the common crawl data set when get, gathering their training data. And uh, the common crawl is basically a set of, uh, you know, just public websites that crawlers can uh, just index and uh, cache the responses from each of the servers on the web. And this is a huge data set, but the, the problem with, with this data set is that it can be pretty noisy. So there's a lot of web pages out there. Uh, different pages have different quality, uh, you know, different language, uh, you know, etc. cetera. So uh, what I found that is interesting is uh, what they did for GPT-2, uh, let me see, yeah, uh, yeah. What this is a pragmatic approach. Uh, yeah, manually create uh, for surf indication. So basically, somewhere in here, let me just say, search for Reddit. Yeah, the, yeah. Here, here is the line that I was looking. Um, so, so th this is what they, uh, what they did in this particular uh, model. So rather than scraping the full web, which you know other models have done with uh, the, the web crawl. Uh, which is, you know, as they mentioned, there's this is expensive as a start. Um, what they did is that they scraped the outbound links from Reddit. And they basically emphasized this, which links to take based on document quality. And, uh, you know, like, I believe they also mentioned here that, um, you know, like, uh, especially, you know, like, uh, posts that have received at least three points in karma. So, so this is interesting because basically what they're doing is they're using a previous model, which uh, we'll take a look in a second, and they're improving the model, but they're also significantly improving the quality of the original data set, which in this case, is basically a combination of Reddit with their outbound links, um, you know, which I, I could see how this, this in particular can make, make the data set so much cleaner and so much more interesting. So the previous uh, the previous paper is uh, or you know which this paper is based on is also a paper from Alec Radford and it's called Improving Language Understanding by Generative Retraining and uh, you could see from here from the title why the second paper is called GPT two is basically the initials from uh, uh, generative pretraining and uh, this is this is a paper that you know like someone else might be worth interested in discussing. But um, I, I think the part that is worth mentioning here is that um, 
it tackles the problem in two different ways. One is using uh, unsupervised training, uh, basically just making sure of the that the text uh, pre-processing the text actually follows kind of like a probabilistic distribution from the words that you would expect on on that particular data set. And the other part is using uh, supervised supervised fine tuning with the actual extracts of the pages and the, in this case the outbound links. Well, in the newer paper, the outbound links that um, Reddit provides. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of details here that are uh, honestly beyond what I've uh, I've been investigating for this particular model. So, uh, but you know, you're free to take a look at you know exactly their approach if you look. At, I, I would recommend you start with this uh, this paper, improving language understanding, um, which uh, you know a lot of it is based like the GPT two model is based on this original GPT. All right, so there is um, there is a repo on GitHub where you can actually make use of this particular model, and uh, it's basically a set of Python files that use TensorFlow to load the model and allow you to do predict run predictions over the model. And um, you know we don't need to get into details because uh, what we created for you is rather a model in R that wraps that particular model using Reticulate and TensorFlow to easily actually just get you up and running and uh, load the model and run the predictions. So all you have to do is, uh, well, first of all, install the package. So you want to say remote install GitHub R TensorFlow GPT-2. Um, actually worth mentioning, uh, there's uh, we have a new org where we're basically trying to uh, put together some of the models that we are working on, so you're um, you know you're free to take a look at those as well. Anyway, so this is this is a particular model. It's GPT-2. The name of the package is GPT-2. So the first thing you need to do is install the package, and after you install it, you want to run GPT-2 install GPT-2, which basically installs the dependencies for this particular model. Um, now, in in my case, I use OSX and what I had to do was to use Conda mostly because I had Python, I had Python 2.0 installed, and um, well, first of all, this model is not compatible with Python 2. You would need to uh, install Python 3, and in my particular environment, I was hitting a few issues getting uh, this particularly installed. So actually, we don't need to do this. Uh, let me just cancel. Um, just that gives you an idea of what you have to do. And uh, if you use Conda, which is the way that I resolve my particular Python issue, what you would want to do is you would want to restart your session and uh, just prompt to uh, reticulate that you want to use uh, Conda. In my case, I also created a particular environment, and that's that's pretty much it. And uh, then what you want to do is you can simply say, hello, my name is, this is the out-of-the-box example that I um, suggested in the uh, particular uh, file for this project, on the readme file for this project. Um, you can do more interesting things, actually. So we're going to let this one run for a second. Um, actually, one of the challenges is that, um, actually, the video might be kind of even choppy now that I'm recording it, because it uses significant uh, CPU um, processing um, compute time. And uh, it, it, it is actually highly recommend that you run this with a GPU. I personally did not run it with a GPU, but uh, it's something that you should consider. Uh, so what I would want to encourage you to read is actually a, a blog post from Sigrid, where uh, she goes into details into exactly what are the implications and, ex and the use cases for this model. So I'll just skim through it, but you should take a look at that. And uh, so the first one is, the first use case is to, um, well, I don't know if we mentioned it in this blog post, but uh, the first use case is uh, kind of like completing um, like a text entry by giving it a prompt. So you can, as, as I was mentioning here, you can basically give it a prompt, hello, my name is, and GPT-2 will be able to complete or suggest uh, what follows from this particular use case. 
um, this, this is the use case that got a lot of um, media attention related to fake news. So you could potentially generate auto-generate news that looks somewhat similar and why not? Uh, but there's a couple, I, I believe, more interesting use cases. Uh, one of them is basically giving it a summarization, well, as, asking GPT-2 to give a summary of an article. So if you provide an article, right, whatever that is, and then you add this special um, too long, did not read, kind of like token, uh, what the GPT-2 model is going to do is basically give you a summary of that particular uh, text entry, which I, I think it could be much more useful than you know generating text, for instance. Um, now, one of the things to note is that Sigrid is using the um, you know like the biggest model that OpenAI OpenAI has released. Uh, in my case, what I'm using is the pretty small, I believe, it's 128 um, megabyte uh, uh, model. And as you can see, even with this model, my computer is already having a hard time using only CPU to process uh, this particular prompt. Uh, I, I, the, the, there is one, the, the actual model that uh, OpenAI used is actually twice as big as this one. It has 1.5, 1.6 billion, billion parameters, and it has not been released. Uh, but, and, and there's definitely a significant difference between, between models, and as, as, as you will see. So here's, here's the output, uh, you know, it's saying, Hello, my name is uh, Juan President of the United States of America. You and your administration now know not only that you have this conflict under question, but we have sanitized information, etc. Um, you know, it's it's um, it has some le level of uh, randomness uh, associated to it. Uh, Sigrid de describes describes pretty clearly what are the different parameters that you can tweak in this for this particular model but um you know i would definitely encourage you to use the larger models uh 774 megabytes and also use a gpu if you want to train this well not train but run this model properly so the couple other use cases that you have um it's q and a's i'm not going to run them just because it takes so long uh, but you can prompt the model with a q and a and basically, you know, uh, the model can attempt to base, uh, basically answer the question. You need to follow the model. Well, the, you, you need to input the text with exactly these prompts, Q and A. And why not? Um, or for the model to suggest kind of like what's, what, what follows. And you can also do a little bit of uh, translation. I think this is pushing the model too far out. Um, you know, like if you, if, if, if you prompt the model with a few, um, Kind of like prompts of uh, the types of translations that you want to do, uh, the model is able to translate. Uh, you know, part of the context. I, I honestly think this is pushing it too far out. What the model is capable of, in summarization and generating uh, text is a couple more reasonable applications for this model. All right. Well, so this gives you a sense of how to run this. I honestly think it's pretty great that you can. Um, use these with R with such and ease of use. Uh, basically, you know, you can just run it and install it quite easily. GPT-2, the prompt, uh, the, the size of the model, as I was mentioning, uh, the seed in case, in, in case you want to fix your uh, random generation sequences. And, uh, you know, a few, a few other prompts like batch, total tokens, temperature, uh, top K and top P, which are also described in the docs. And, um, I, I thought it would be interesting to discuss on uh, kind of like to close on this video what it would take to actually generate this model. So as as I mentioned, uh, the repo from OpenAI, the original repo, only provides support for using the model. And uh, also the R model basically only provides support for using this model to generate, summarize, Q&A, and um, translate text. Uh, a few people have been uh, kind of like investigating what it would take to train the actual model from scratch. Uh, there seem to be a few projects going on that are community driven. Um, but, but the same challenge, the, actually the first problem that you have with this model is uh, you first need to get the original data set. So um, I'm not actually quite sure if uh, 
OpenAI released the full data set or a partial data set. But if you look at their repo, they do have uh, they, they do have a data set for uh, GPT-2 that you can reuse. And there's basically uh, like a helper function, a helper file, I guess, that basically downloads this data set and why not. And uh, yeah, I haven't checked the license of this particular, um, you know, kind of like data set, but you know, you're free, you're, you're welcome to take a look at that. I, I thought it would be also interesting to mention that there is, if you look at the Reddit machine learning, um, uh, website, you'll see that uh, there's also an open web text project that is basically trying to recreate the data set that um, OpenAI used. It's a work in progress and uh, you know, uh, it's it's probably easier to download it from uh, from the original Open, uh, OpenAI um, yeah, it's basically easier to just download it from the OpenAI uh, data set uh, Provided and why not? But definitely, if you're looking into improving it and matching it to be at a par with with open AIs, you would probably have to do your own uh, crawl of Reddit, and this might be a good place to start. So, um, yeah. So regarding with training, there's there's another package of mostly the machine learning community in Reddit. Well, I found it through the machine learning community in Reddit that could get you up and running to training. But th this is again like pretty much kind of like, um, you know, work in progress. And uh, it, it doesn't even make sense to create a wrapper from R, I think at this point, um, maybe when, when it's a little bit more ready and, um, you know, we could consider also creating a wrapper for GPT-2 training, not just GPT-2 uh, runtime. And uh, yeah, so you can keep keep a look at a few of these uh, repos and, uh, you know, like definitely take a look at that. And uh, just to close, there was, um, you know, what you can take a look at is basically kind of like what it would take for you to actually, um, you know, train this on your own. And there have been a few discussions out there with the community. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure they got this from some code from OpenAI, but it basically took two, 256 um, eight core TPUs uh, training for a week. And uh, someone kind of like did uh, back of the napkin calculation of what's the cost related with training these type of models. And I find it interesting, you know, that in this case, you know, would be the uh, 32 TPUs uh, running for at least a week would be about 43K, uh, K, uh, so $50,000. So it's definitely not like a trivial project to run on your own. Um, and, you know, it would have to run in distributed manner and why not? So definitely, um, you know, things to keep an eye on if you really need to train on your specific um, data set. I think, honestly, for for now, the applications of this model are more about exploring what is the frontier on text um, modeling. And also, uh, perhaps it can be used for basic summarization. I think, I think summarization is a good use case for this model. And uh, there might be a couple more interesting use cases, especially, I think, uh, layering up, you know, your particular text data set with other, um, uh, you know, like other pieces of perhaps non-structured data set. You could use the model um, to train as, as a, the original source and then pre-train, well, use the pre-trained model to train over the original GP2 data set and kind of like complement your uh, models with non-structured data. Maybe that's something we can explore in a different video, but um, it's, uh, it's probably easier than retraining for sure uh, the whole GPT-2 model from, from scratch. All right, well, thank you so much for taking a look at this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, if you want to make use of the GPT-2 model, definitely take a look at the TensorFlow blog post on the RStudio site. Otherwise, um, you know, you can also are welcome to open GitHub issues on the R TensorFlow repo for the GPT-2 model. Thank you.